the day I met Dan. I don't see the need for a distinction, said Carl, closing the sliding glass of the back door. He found himself in a kitchen with tile floors frozen in the decade of their imagining, an abuse of oak and an otherwise spacious and tidy kitchen. Carl had never been to Dan's house. He had just moved into the neighborhood a few months ago and had merely waved at the fellow from down the street, the better part of a block, just to get the trash bin from the curb and sprint back. He was still in slippers and robe, but somehow got smuggled from a wave into a stranger's home. I can't stay long. I haven't even dressed. Nonsense, Dan called back. It'll only be moment by moment by moment, as it always is anyway. Dan added as if to himself. I could hear him rustling through a drawer or something in the other room, not sure which or where. Having just entered the kitchen, taken a few steps and couched by the island, the multiple doorways all open, like the main intersection of the house lay to my left. I suddenly forgot. Why had I come? Into this stranger's house? In just my robe? Dan had sold me on something. No, nothing like that. He had sparked an interest. What was it? Out in the street before, trying to inch back home, away and out of the conversation. Something he had said excited me, Carl thought to himself, but for the life of me. All truths of the mind can be the outliers of a crime. Dan came stumbling in, holding a matchbox, what appeared to be a hand-rolled cigarette and a small, rather abused paperback book. Let's go out back. It's nicer there. And we are going to smoke a little of this, pointing to the cigarette. Slightly taken aback, I looked down at my slippers as they motioned to follow him. An exclamation, I let out a grunt when my arm followed suit, and I blurted out as if losing control. What was going on, I said to myself, or did I say that aloud? Echoes. Or is it now? You are being used as impetus for a novel. What? It was as if I had been unconscious before, for now I sat across from Dan on a cold stone porch coming off the back of his home, opening up to a beautiful garden with a little pond lined with cedars and a giant oak. Overhanging a slope near the pond, adjacent a raised wooden structure enclosed around a tree stump, which is where Dan sat. Well. Not really a novel. It is more of a novelty. More of a book of everything so far. You, your life, your memories have all been hijacked for the purpose of an individual's literature. None of this is real at all. Soon that cigarette I gave you will remove you from this world you regularly know. Regularly know? Now hold on a second. This is absurd. Who do you think you are? When did I smoke? When did I even sit down? All of your life, your loves, your hates, your identity will fall away from you as you are drained of what is false to you. The things that may have felt pressing or important have no real substance. You will find yourself as a subtle consciousness intermittent with the fibers of the book within which your life was copied and your spirit was lifted. Your existence mirrored so precisely that you would not know the difference. Apparently you have not been paying too close attention anyway. 
There will be many mysteries ahead explained and choices to make, all of them pertaining to the body, without the body, for the future of everybody. You will be without the physical anchors you have grown accustomed to. This can be troubling at first, but you will adjust. Just reach back into the time before remembering the comforts of discomforts of the skin, before the reactions, before the habits formed, before all those circuits locked into place. Amongst the book's fibers, we will study the verse coded into your life that will build our new body. Now hold on, Dan, is it? But I couldn't. It was as if his voice had control over my entire being. I kept failing to recall my surroundings, movements, actions, occurring beyond my conscious reach. My voice was cut out of its timeline of reflection. How am I even voicing this now? I am in the backyard. I am sitting on the stone porch. I am surrounded by trees and light, the sound of birds. No, no you're no, not, no, a voice not. boomed in, knocking my vision through the stone porch into the blank whiteness, the still verse floor. I see no need for the distinction. I could hear repeating, echoing in my head as if I had just finished saying those words in an alternate location. Oh. Oh. Replacing that time-locked kitchen behind the closing back door, I swayed now into the pages of bits of information. Recollected data all flowing through the spaghetti of white fiber, describing everything and the kitchen. I see now, said Carl. 